What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Apex Legends video, and in this one, we're going to be having a very deep look at lifeline packages. So with this, I'm going to be sharing how you can get an infinite number of lifeline packages in the training mode, and therefore you can get attachments within the training mode. A lot of people have been asking about that and wondering how I do that in my videos. Then we're going to be looking at a very unique and helpful characteristic about the lifeline packages that you can definitely take advantage of in-game. And finally, I've collected a ton of data on lifeline packages, and I'm going to be sharing the odds of getting various items in the game through these packages. So first up, let's have a look at the training mode and how you can get an infinite number of lifeline packages, and therefore you can start getting attachments on your gun to play around with them and test them out a little bit. Now normally when you go through the training mode, once you get to the stage where you call in a lifeline package and the package comes in, a countdown starts and when that countdown completes, you get kicked out of training mode. So therefore, even if you do get an attachment out of the lifeline package, you don't really have much time to use it and test it. And it's really inconsistent as well because there's a really good chance you're not going to get the attachment that you actually wanted to test. So there's actually a pretty easy workaround with this, and I'm going to be speeding it up here and showing you guys what this looks like. What you have to do is once you get to the stage where you can call in your ultimate or your lifeline package, the moment you call it in, you want to jump up on the little ledge behind these targets that will fall down when you shoot them, and then you want to shoot that target. Keep in mind you have to do this after you call the lifeline package in, but before it hits the ground. What this does is it actually kills you, and then when you respawn, you're essentially reverted back to a checkpoint, and therefore that countdown never starts to kick you out of the training area. This allows you to experiment with whatever items you get out of that lifeline package, and it also allows you to repeat that process. You can do this in an infinite loop as long as you don't lose connection to the server or time out for inactivity. So for everybody that's been wondering how I get the attachments for my videos to test them within the training mode, this is how I do it. And sometimes it can be a very, very time consuming and tedious process because you never really know what you're going to get, and it could take quite some time to get the attachment you need. But that's the struggle you have to go through if you want to test attachments out in training mode, at least in the game's current state. Thankfully, Respawn has confirmed that at some point they will be adding a better training mode or firing range type area where we will have access to all the attachments. But until that happens, this is the method you have to use. So that's the first part of this video, but as I was testing attachments and calling in all these lifeline packages while doing this, I decided I might as well be collecting the data on these lifeline packages that I'm calling in, so I set up a spreadsheet and I was collecting all of the items that I earned. And one thing that I found with the lifeline packages that's very unique and not very many people know about this right now, is each side of the lifeline package is completely independent of the other sides and will spawn a certain set of items. So the side that you're facing at the moment that you call the lifeline package in, that's kind of the wild card side. This is where you'll generally see attachments, but sometimes you'll also see things like backpacks. You can also see a knockdown shield. Keep in mind, all of the items will be of purple or better rarity in this. Then on the left side from where you call it in, this is always going to be either shield cells or syringes. And then on the right side, this is the only side where you can get a purple body shield, a purple helmet, or you can also get a purple knockdown shield on this side, but keep in mind purple knockdown shields can be on the front side as well, unlike the body shield or the helmet, which can only be received on this side of the lifeline package. And you can use this information to your advantage when you're calling in your lifeline package. Especially if you're playing with randoms, a lot of the times if you're playing as lifeline, you want first dibs on that purple body shield. To maximize your odds of getting that purple body shield and making sure your teammates don't snatch it up for you before you can pick it up, pay attention to the angle you're facing when you call in that lifeline package and then go towards the right hand side of that package and just spam the pickup button. This will allow you to always get that purple body shield first unless they also see you doing the same and they know this same technique. I know for some people this might come off as kind of petty, but I feel like if you're playing as lifeline, you kind of should have first dibs to that purple body shield, unless you're in a team that's communicating and therefore you can decide who would be better off with that body shield. But in either case, this will allow you to always get that body shield first if that's what you're looking for. But now let's get into the statistical analysis that I did on these lifeline packages so you can see which kind of items you can get on each side of these lifeline packages, as well as an indication of the odds of getting these items. So what I did is I spent a ton of time calling in 50 lifeline packages and recording each of the items that I received on each side of the lifeline packages. So I did isolate each side of those packages since they are clearly different and independent. And this took quite a bit of time. I know 50 may not be the biggest sample size out there, but I feel like it's a pretty decent sample size for one person to be collecting. And it's as big of a sample as I could realistically do while maintaining my sanity. So for the critics out there, no, this isn't 100% up to scientific standards when it comes to this analysis. But the purpose of this video is just to give you an idea of which items you can get out of these lifeline packages, as well as the general odds that you're going to be getting each of these items. 
So first up, let's have a look at the front side of the lifeline package. So this is the side that you're facing as you call the lifeline package in. Within this side, like I said, this is kind of the wild card side where you can get anything from attachments to backpacks to Phoenix kits to some of the hop ups as well. And out of 50 packages, you can see these are the items that I got on the front side. Now, I will admit that it is likely that there are a few other things that you can potentially get on the front side of the lifeline package that I simply didn't see within 50 of them spawned in. But this should at least give you a very good indication of the types of things that you can get from the front side of one of these packages. Now, one thing that's worth noting, I think I mentioned this early in the video, but I wanted to restate this. All of the items that you get on this side are going to be level three or better. So purple or better. So for example, you can't get a gray or a blue barrel stabilizer. You can only get a purple one. The same thing applies for all of the other items on this side. As for the distribution, you could see that I got at least two of each one of these items out of 50. And I got up to seven with the one times digital threat site. Now with this distribution, it doesn't seem like any particular item has a really significantly higher chance of spawning in. Perhaps some are more likely than others, but with the number of items that you can potentially get out of this side, a sample size of 50 simply isn't enough. But like I said, it's also not really practical for me to be testing like a thousand of these lifeline packages. That would take me many months of testing on my own to be able to get that. So I would say it is reasonable to assume that it's roughly equal odds of getting these items. Some maybe will have slightly stronger odds than others, but nothing that really stood out above the rest. This brings us to the next side, which is going to be the left-hand side of the lifeline package. Like I said, this is always going to spawn either shield cells or syringes. And out of 50 lifeline packages, 36 of them contained a shield cell on the left-hand side, and only 14 of them contained a syringe on the left-hand side. So my results show that 72% of the time you're going to get a shield cell on this side, and 28% of the time you're going to get a syringe on the left-hand side. Now, it's more likely that this is coded on a more round number, so it's very likely either 75, 25, or 70, 30, or something along those lines. Just know that on this side, you are much more likely to be getting shield cells than syringes. And finally, this just leaves us with the right side of the lifeline packages. And with this one, like I said at the beginning of the video, the only three items that were spawned within 50 lifeline packages were a level 3 body shield, a level 3 helmet, and a level 3 knockdown shield. And this means 42% of the times I got a helmet, 30% of the time I got a knockdown shield, and 28% of the time I got a body shield. Once again, it's more likely this is coded with a more round number, so it might be 40% helmet, and then 30% knockdown, and 30% body shield. Or it could even be 50% helmet, and then 25% knockdown shield, 25% body shield. But in either case, it is quite clear that you are most likely to get a helmet, and then there's about equal odds of getting either a knockdown shield or a body shield. And with that, that pretty much covers it for the lifeline packages in Apex Legends. Hopefully you learned something new with this video, and I hope that I was able to shed at least a little bit of light on the rough odds of getting various items with these lifeline packages. Also, I really hope that you find it useful now knowing that there are three different sides to that lifeline package, and you can maximize your odds of being the first one to get that purple body shield. Now, since the YouTube algorithm loves those 10-minute videos, instead of stretching out all this information any further, I'm going to leave some gameplay for you guys, and this was actually a very intense finish to a game. So we left no man behind, we were almost out of ammo, it was quite a crazy finish, and I think you guys will enjoy it. But if you guys were just here for the information, I will totally understand if you want to leave the video here. If you enjoyed it, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.